And here, as you can see, is the size of the Primus Omni Fuel. When it's all closed up, it literally fits in the palm of your hand. This would be probably not okay to store in a front pant pocket, but if you have a cargo pant pocket, it'll stick quite well. <clears throat> and it'll fit in there nicely. Here's the bag that it comes with. So you can stick in here, obviously, the stove itself, but also the heat shield and the repair kit, anything else that you've got there like that. So to start off by opening it up, and unfolding the serrated legs, which actually do a really good job of gripping onto uh, pots or pans, things along those lines. Just flip open the valve right here, the handle for it, so you can just turn that to the on position, off position to allow fuel to come out of it. Here is the attachment section, which gets attached to the fuel bottle. Now the fuel bottle uh, doesn't usually come with the kit, but when you're attaching it, uh, you can buy it. Some kits sometimes it comes with it as a special bonus uh, option. Obviously, it's going to be more expensive. But you can see here, this actually spins as you're attaching the fuel hose, so you don't have to worry about spinning the whole bottle around the valve to get the fuel hose attached, which is kind of nice. It's just a little bit more convenient. And here's the fuel valve from the hose itself, the fuel tank. Now, on the top of the bottom of uh, the bottle, You've got the word on, and on the other side you've got the word off. So to make it work, you want to obviously have the on side up, and you're going to give that several pumps just to prime the system. Oh, you have to mind the camera there, the dog decided to come out and check what's going on. So once that's all primed on up, you're going to need to get a little bit of fuel inside the saturation pad which is located at the bottom. Now when you're lighting it, you want to make sure you light it really down low where the saturation pad is and not up top where the flame spitter is. The idea when you get this going is that during the preheat sequence, the fuel will burn inside here as an orange glow, but the idea is to get the fuel nice and hot inside the feeder tube right here, because that's later on where that's actually going to ignite, not inside the burner itself. So it's important to preheat that whole thing. So we're just going to apply a little bit of fuel. Oh, it would help if I turn this on. First over at the bottle. And now a little bit of a squirt over here just enough to get the saturation pad nice and wet or the primer pad nice and wet and then turn it off. It's important that you turn it off otherwise you have a big enough a explosion. Okay, so we're going to let that burn. This is the pre-warming process where everything gets nice and warm and just as that orange flame goes out and you'll hear a little bit of a jet soundy engine that's letting you know that it's starting to work effectively. That's when you're going to turn the stove valve on just a little bit and ever so gently. This pre-warming cycle takes about 30 or 40 seconds, um, depending on how much fuel you put in there. And how long you need to do it for depends on your altitude and what the kind of temperatures you were uh, worried about. i move the tank away from that a little bit. So the flame's burning down. And we're going to give it a little bit of fuel. So you can hear that sound now. And the popping of the orange just means that the preheating isn't done completely. Give it a little bit more fuel. And there's that nice jet engine sound that you're looking for. There's no more orange popping flames coming out, so it's preheated really nicely. And you can adjust the flame as high as you need to. If that doesn't work for some reason, you got to shut the whole thing off, let it cool down, and then start the whole process all over again. But it's important to make sure that you let it cool down. It's very important. Now, if we want to simmer, you just lower it right down just before it goes off. And this is one feature that makes things a little bit different from some of the other stoves, is that you can simmer food on this, where most of these types of stoves are just for boiling water. Now, to turn the thing off, just leave the valves open, and what you're going to do is you actually take the tank itself, flip it upside down, so that it goes into the off position, where on the top of the tank now is the word off, 
and that's important so that the angle of the pickup tube is now pointed downward right into the wet fuel and it's not just picking up the vapor which is what is normally feeding through it. This will take about a minute or two for the pressure to dissipate and to burn off whatever fuel is in the line. So I'll turn this all the way up.